Good morning, everyone, and welcome to you. A couple of announcements for you. The torch is brand new, so make sure you grab that. Flowers today are given by our Altar Guild in celebration of the advent of our Savior, Jesus. Thank you, Altar Guild, for that. Take a look at all of your announcements. Ladies Aid has their bake sale today. We're very thankful for our Ladies Aid Society, and this bake sale is a fundraiser, and they use those uh, dollars to support missions and uh, programs and events within our congregation. So thank you for that. Advent is here, which means Wednesday midweek services have begun. And we have 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. worship here at Trinity. The theme is the light of grace. We have Advent-themed devotions, both for our midweek service, uh, helping us with that theme, but we also have the Lutheran Hour Advent devotions as well. So we encourage you to uh, follow along. The devotions begin today and take us through Advent. We have daily Bible readings for our Advent theme, The Light of Grace. We also have out there a, a litany for use during your Christmas Day festivities. Prayers for before and after opening gifts kind of centers the entire day on the reason why there is a Christmas. Uh, to help with that, for little kids, we have an A through Z Christmas book, brand new from CPH this year. We have a number of them out there. They're $15. Take the book. If you do not have $15, uh, bring back the envelope and put it in the offering box when you can. Finally, an Advent Devotion sticker book activity for kids also available. All right. Our worship today includes our sanctuary choir. So, choir, so happy that you are with us this morning to help us with our worship and to celebrate. Uh, our service today, because we're in Advent, will follow all the rubrics for Advent, which means the glory of the excelsis will be omitted. For our worship, our service today is page 184. You can mark that with one of your bookmarks. Hopefully you're recognizing that bookmarks are being replaced and repaired in our hymnals. If yours has not uh, happened yet, that side of the church is almost completed, and uh, we're working on this side. So uh, you can put a bookmark on page 184. Our opening hymn today is 350. Howard Eggert, do you have anything for us today? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes, we began a brand new church year today. We have uh, retired year A, and we are in year B beginning today. So uh, check out on page, I think, 10 in your hymnal. Roman numeral 10 is the entire church year. So it goes 365 days. Today is the first day of the brand new church year. It's called the first Sunday of Advent. So, uh, Rob, anything from you? Friday, 6 o'clock. Friday, 6 o'clock, dinner, and uh, poetry and music at 7. All right, let us sing.
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have never offended you, and thus you deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am already sorry for them, I am sincerely repent for them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death. Of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this day, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you are angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time and shall we be saved. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our enemies. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O oh Lord. And remember, not in iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
when they drew near to Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately, as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will set it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street. They untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing? Untying the colt. And they told them what Jesus had said. And they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road. And others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the power, and he will come again. Whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the 
found yourselves in an awkward position simply because of your Christian faith, an uncomfortable moment or a unique setting, and just because you're a Christian, it caused a little angst for the situation. A situation where perhaps the accepted norms of society or the expectations of others conflicted with what you knew to be the godly thing, the right thing to do or to say. Christians are often expected to fit into the rest of society, to look and sound just like everyone else. Have you felt this pressure? Have you experienced this kind of conformity? Society sometimes says that we should not talk about our Christian faith. We should keep it to ourselves. Trappist monk Thomas Merton once said, The worst error is to imagine that a Christian must try to be sane like everybody else, and that we belong in our kind of society. St. Paul said it this way, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Jesus, in the high priestly prayer, said it this way, Father, I'm praying for them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Did you hear what Jesus said about his disciples? They are in the world, but they are not of the world. Isn't that what we are called to be? In the world, but not of the world. We are to have the renewal of our minds, and we are to live shining the light of Christ into our society, to our families, into our neighborhoods, into our communities, into our workplaces. And it might bring us into some uncomfortable situations. As we begin the Advent season and move toward Christmas, I think this season is the perfect reason why to be open more bold and courageous about sharing our faith. We have a reason. I mean, the whole world is decorated with Christmas lights and Christmas trees. Let's use it to the advantage of our Christian faith and share the truth about the Christmas season. The situation today in the Gospel of Mark was a little odd socially, practically, and probably legally. But let me suggest that this awkward moment, this uncomfortable moment, might, might give us courage in our own living. You heard the gospel. Let me, let me remind you now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately, as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went, and they found a colt tied at the door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing? untying the colt. And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the roads, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, 
Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now I'm sure the two disciples that were sent thought this was odd. And it had the potential of putting them in an extremely uncomfortable situation. We're supposed to go to the town and find a coat that's tied outside of a building, outside of a home, and simply untie it and bring it back to you? What kind of conversation do you think they're going to have with people around if they're questions? When confronted about the young donkey, they were told to say, simply, the Lord has need of it. Well, what in the world is going to happen next? I'm reminded of the Ten Commandment and meaning from the Catechism. You remember that one? You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not entice or force away our neighbor's wife, workers, or animals, or turn them against him, but urge them to stay and do their duty. Obviously, the disciples did not read Luther's law catechism. Nor Jesus, I guess, right? So Jesus has given them specific directions. And they're to go into the town and follow the word of God, no matter how uncomfortable it might get. Imagine being one of the disciples. How would you, how would you handle the situation? Would you have a conversation with Jesus before we even depart? Jesus, can I make a suggestion? Can we just go to the treasurer, Judas, and have him get into his money pouch? And can we not go to Hertz and rent a donkey? <laughs> can we not go and simply buy one for you? I mean, just to go in and find one and take it and bring it back. Can we suggest something else? But... That is not even a part of our text, and it doesn't seem like it happened, and it most likely didn't even cross their mind, because remember, by this time, they had been with Jesus how long? Three years. They had seen the miracles. They had heard his words. Just most recently, with respect to the timeline of this event, Lazarus had just been raised to life. So if Jesus says to do something, they're, at this moment, going to do it. They're going to trust in the Word of God, no matter how uncomfortable or awkward the directions make them feel or how uncomfortable the experience before them. And what do we know is going to happen here? This donkey is going to be used to bring the Messiah into Jerusalem for the very last time. And the people are going to welcome the King of Kings, the humble king, the one who comes in, who enters in peace and humility. It is the welcome that is due to Jesus. You know, Advent is the season of preparation for welcoming Jesus, the Messiah, into uh, earth and into our lives and into our presence. And here... We see the crowd getting ready to welcome Jesus. And it's a reminder to us to be prepared to welcome Jesus. God humbled himself to be born of a woman. He humbled himself and enters Jerusalem this one last time. Here Jesus, the Lamb of God, will become the sacrificial lamb for us all. By his stripes, wounds, and innocent suffering and death, the penalty to our sin will be completely paid for. Yes, the disciples are asked to do something a little uncomfortable, and that is okay. Our bodies, the totality of who we are, belong to the Creator, to the one 
who created us. We must submit our will to his will. Consider the words of the prophet Isaiah from our first reading today. But now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. And you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. We confess this truth. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. God has made us. God loves us and he has created us for his purpose. And I hope you can capture this understanding that we are to live for him. And that God desires all people to be saved. And so the gospel message of Jesus, of who he is, God in human flesh, sent as Savior for the whole world, we are to share that truth with others around us. Family and friends, neighbors and co-workers. God has called us in Christ to be a witness. It might be in a way of service. It might be in a way of prayer. It may be in a way of someone says something and it's a prompt for you to say, I believe in Jesus, and he is the Savior of the world. And then you share the gospel with them. There's many ways to share the truth of God in Christ with those around us. So Advent is a wonderful season for us to share, to tell others about Jesus, no matter how uncomfortable it might be. Our unbelieving family, friends, neighbors, and co-workers need Jesus. So now is time for all people to welcome and to receive the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to shout Hosanna in the highest. Amen. In our prayer today, prayers have been requested for the following. For peace in Israel and Ukraine, for all caregivers, prayers for patience, strength, and peace. For Merck Novak, Mike Moreno, Arthur Hartwig, Marilyn Todd, Jim Pichel, Lucille Pichowski, Neil Cardosa, Ryan Murray, Jose Cotto, Abigail Kuzak, Carol Killley, Bruce Harkin, Debbie Sipley, Lisa Bennis, Diana Kidder, Richard DeWitt, Bryce Williams, Richard Stonies, all for health and healing. To Lori Piper and Mary Jane Clayway, who are receiving hospice care. Also, we pray for Jeff Trinchy, Mike Lindy, and Adele Bacciano. For the family and friends of Jack Butcher, who died. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we give thanks and praise you for your goodness and mercy that follow us all the days of our lives. You are our God. We are your people. You have purchased and won us from sin and death by the sacrifice of your Son upon the cross and by his rising from the grave. As he now sits at your right hand, exalted over all things, we wait expectantly for the day of his revealing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty King and loving Savior, we thank you for the authority you have over all things in heaven and on earth. To a world in disarray and for a people filled with despair, you alone offer hope, peace, and certainty that all things are in your hands. Help us to trust in you, to judge the living and the dead, and to know that we wait for the redemption that you have provided for us. Bless the land in which we live and all those who serve for the benefit of us all. Be present in our homes, our schools, our workplaces. Give us courage to share the truth of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healer of the broken and sustainer of the weary. 
Grant the comfort of your Holy Spirit to all who are suffering in heart, body, mind, and spirit. Remind those who are downtrodden that they are never alone. And use us as your people to reach out in care and compassion to those in our family, our community, within this congregation, and around the world, especially those we have named before your altar this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we are waiting, expectant, hope-filled people. We anticipate the day of your revealing when your saving work will be fully and completely known and revealed, and that you will renew and restore all things in heaven and on earth. Until that glorious day, help us to rely upon your grace alone, which declares us guiltless in your sight, through faith in your promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Confident in our coming King and Savior, we entrust our prayers into your merciful hands. For you, O Father, live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Lift up your hearts. Drink of it, all of you. 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Oh.
will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Treats await you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.